Okay, chapter 6, section 4. Solving polynomial equations. What we're going to try to learn here is we're going to try to learn how to solve polynomial equations. Okay, we're not going to be worried too much about graphing. But we're going to solve more equations by factoring. Okay. We're going to learn how to do sums of cubes and differences of the cubes. Okay. Solving polynomial equations by factoring. Sometimes you'll be able to solve polynomial equations by factoring the polynomials using the factor theorem. Recall that a quadratic expression is the difference of squares, okay, that has special factoring pro, uh, pattern. Similarly, the cubic problems and the cubic expressions, or the sum of cubes and the difference of cubes, have this similar type of uh, special pattern. So you'll have to memorize this. This is this will save you so much time and effort if you can just memorize it. If you get an a cubed plus a b cubed, you're going to have it set up as a, in parentheses a plus b, in parentheses a squared minus ab plus b squared. Again, this would be something you'd put on your note card to remember for your quizzes and tests. Um, the cubic differences, the difference of cubes, a cubed minus b cubed would be, here's the big difference, here's the big difference, a minus b, in parentheses, and all this is positive, a squared plus ab plus b squared. Now, we can verify the properties above by multiplying it out. The below are the steps for the sum of the cubes. All right. Notice how a lot of things drop out. So, um, you can either work this every time or you can just memorize the equations. The sum of cubes, uh, a cubed plus b cubed is a plus b in parentheses, a squared minus ab plus b squared. The differences of cubes is a minus b in parentheses, a squared plus ab plus b squared. Okay? Write that down. Pause this if you need to, but write all that down. Make sure you understand it before we move on. Alright, so let's look at the example they give us. It says factor the difference of these. Uh, this is a difference of cubes. It's x cubed minus 8. We could really rewrite this as x cubed minus 2 cubed. So in our, in our terms, a would be x and our b would be 2. So if we remember those things, we've got a minus b, a squared, plus ab, plus b squared. So our a value is x, so it would be x. Our b value was 2, so minus 2. In parentheses, a squared was x squared. ab was a 2 and an x, so we could say plus 2x plus b squared, so plus 4. So again, this is just memorization of the difference of cubes and the sum of cubes. Any questions on that? Good. Moving on. So, next question. Let's factor 8x cubed minus 1. Well, really, what is the cubic of 8? Well, 2 times 2 is 4 times 2 is 8. So really, that could be considered 2x cubed minus 1 cubed, because remember 1 times 1 is itself. So, a is 2x, our b is 1, since it's a difference, we know it's going to be a minus b, in parentheses, a squared, plus ab, plus b squared. So now it's just plugging in stuff that we know. So our a value, alright, is 2x, our b is 1, so 2x minus 1. Our a squared, which would be 2x in parentheses, squared. So 2x, I'm going to go ahead and square that for us, times ab. Our a was 2x, our b was 1, plus b squared, so that would be 1 squared. So that would be 2x minus 1. 2x squared is 4x squared. 2x times 1 is just 2x, and 1 squared is just 1. So we're looking for 2x minus 1, 4x squared, plus 2x plus 2. And again, I would memorize these or write these down. So your solution was this, which matches B. Easy enough. Solving a polynomial equation. So now gets a little difficult. 
this example says solve 27x to the q x cubed plus 1 equals 0. So we need to find all the complex uh, roots of this. So let's go do the work. So we get 27x cubed plus 1 equals 0. Well, that 27x cubed can be really written as 3x cubed plus 1 cubed. Okay, if you remember the equation, which would be a and b, so it would be a, 3x, plus b, plus 1, because it was a positive. Okay, a squared, so 3x squared would be 9x squared minus ab, so it would be 3x times 1, which would be 3x, plus a squared, or sorry, b squared, which would just be 1. Okay, so we're able to factor it out to 3x plus 1 in parentheses 9x squared minus 3x plus 1. Okay, since, since we know this is a factor, to make that 0, we know x has to equal negative 1 over 3 for that one. Now we've got to go solve the rest of it. Now we've got a quadratic. Let's do the quadratic that we have. I'll highlight that in green so you know what I'm talking about. There's our quadratic equation. And do you guys remember the quadratic formula? x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. Okay. To make it simple, there's our a value, there's our b value, there's our c value. So negative b, we just plug in negative 3. So a negative negative 3 would be a positive 3. 3 plus or minus our b squared, square root of b squared, b is 3. So three, negative 3 squared is 9. Minus 4 times a, which is 9, times c, which is 1, all over 2a, which would be 2 times 9. Okay, let's simplify that a little bit. That would be 3 plus or minus the square root of 9 minus 36 over 18. Okay, which that would equal 3 plus or minus the square root of negative 27, all of that over 18. Okay, let's keep working this. 3 is equal to 3 plus or minus. Well, what times 27? What's, you know, 9 times 27, right? So we can pull out a 9. If we pull out a 9, it becomes a 3, okay, i square root of 3. Okay, let me just break that down for you so you remember how to do the square root of negative 27. The square root of negative 27 is nothing more than the square root of negative 1 times the square root of 9 times the square root of 3. Okay, the square root of negative 1 is i, the square root of 9 is 3, and the square root of 3 is reduced as much as it can be. So the square root of 27 is really 3i square root of 3. All that over 18. So we can reduce it, divide by 3 a little bit, and reduce it just like you see on the book a little bit to the right. We can rewrite this as 3 over 17, or we can factor out the 3. And so we can get 1 plus or minus i square root of 3 all over 6. So our complete solution set is negative 1 third, which we figured out earlier, 1 plus or minus the square, sorry, i, the square root of 3 over 6. So there's our three solutions for the cubic. Next example. Okay. Already worked it. We'll just do it again. Solve x cubed plus 8. Well, we can really rewrite that as x to the third power plus 2 to the third power since it's positive. Remember, we go a plus b times a squared minus 2, sorry, ab plus b squared. So we plug that in, and we get x plus 2, and then we get this cubic over here, x squared minus 2x plus 4. Well, we know a zero factor of this one, x must equal negative 2. 
The other one is going to become a quadratic, so there's our a value, which is 1, our b value, which is negative 2, and our c value, which is positive 4. So now we just plug in the quadratic, negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac over 2a. We just plug values in. So it would be 2 plus or minus 4, or sorry, plus or minus the square root of 4 minus 12, 16 over 2. Well, I didn't do the work over here, but the square root of 4 minus 16 is negative 12, which can be rewritten the square root of negative 1 times the square root of 4 times the square root of 3, which would equal i times 2 square root of 3. All right. So that would reduce down to 2i square root of 3. So you understand where we're going, the next step would look like this. 2 plus or minus 2i square root of 3 all divided by 2. So we can reduce that to 1 plus or minus i square root of 3. So we can rewrite the answers as negative 2. We solve that with the first factor. 1 plus i square root of 3, that's the second factor. And then 1 minus i square root of 3, that would be the third factor. Okay. Okay, factoring using the quadratic form. Okay, so it says right here, factor x to the fourth minus 2x squared minus 8. We can factor this temporarily kind of like a quadratic form here. Okay, since we could say this for for um, for just a, for illustration purposes, we could say y equals x squared. So y squared would equal x to the fourth. Okay, so if we had an equation that was at x fourth minus 2x squared minus 8, you could rewrite it with that substitution as saying, hey, y squared minus 2y minus 8. Okay, then you just go back and use your cross factors. What has a product of negative 8 and a sum of, of negative 2? Well, negative 4 and a positive 2 multiply have a product of negative 8 and have a sum of negative 2. So it would be y minus 4 times y plus 2. Does that make sense? Now we just sub back for the y, which was x squared. So we'd have x squared minus 4. and x squared plus 2. And if you remember about complete squares, x squared minus 4 is really x minus 2 times x plus 2. Okay, since this one's positive over here, there's not really much we can do with this, so we're just going to drop down x squared plus 2. So what makes zeros of these? Well, let's just look. Well, if x equals 2, that one becomes a zero. Well, if x equals negative 2, that one becomes a 0. Well, what does x have to be on the right-hand side? Well, x squared has to equal negative 2. That will never happen in real life. So x needs to equal plus or minus the square root of negative 2. So x needs to equal plus or minus negative. It's rid of the negative. We just put an i out there, i square root of 2. So our solution set for this one is 2 negative 2 positive i square root of 2 negative i square root of 2 it was a it was had four all right it was a quartic so we needed four solutions okay so 2 negative 2 i square root of 2 and negative i square root of 2 we'll do some more of these i hope just to make sure we get it okay factor these Okay, so you notice right now uh, it's x to the fourth and x squared, so we can treat this like a quadratic. So this time, instead of me factoring in the plugging in for a y, I'm just going to draw it up. So we're going to have an x squared times an x squared. So let's factor this. We're looking for something that has a product of 6 and a sum of 7. And they're both positive. So we're looking for a 6 and a 1. 6 times 1 is 6. 6 plus 1 is 7. 
So x squared, squared plus 6 and x squared plus 1. Okay, so we're looking for that answer. The answer would be D. Next example, let's factor this one. So again, since it's x to the fourth and x squared, we can treat it uh, like a quadratic. So let's set up our cross factors. Has to have a product of negative 10 and a sum of negative 3. Well, negative 5 and 2 have a product of negative 10 and a, and a sum of negative 3. So x squared minus 5 and x squared plus 2. So the answer would be D. And again, on this one, if you don't see that, you could say y equals x squared for now. And then rewrite the equation y squared minus 3y minus 10. Now you see that's definitely a quadratic. So you go negative 10, negative 3. Same concept here, 5 and 2. So you go y minus 5 and uh, y plus 2. Uh, sorry and then just change the x squared later if you don't see it. Then we could solve and again it would have four equations when we solved it. Alright, last look. Solving a higher degree polynomial equation. So we get x to the fourth minus x squared equals 12. Well, the first thing we want to do is we want to make it set to equal and think of a quadratic expression. So expression. So we get x to the fourth minus x squared minus 12 equals 0. Okay, so we're looking for something, hopefully this will work, has a product of negative 12 and a sum of, sorry, negative 1. Well, right now I can think of negative 4 and 3. So x squared minus 4 and x squared plus 3. Now we have to solve all the way. We factored it, but now let's solve. Now remember, we can reduce this one a little bit on the left side. x squared minus 4 is really the same thing as saying x minus 2 times x plus 2. x cubed plus 3. There's really not much more we can do to that one right now. So what makes these zeros? Well, a positive 2 and a negative 2. What makes this one 0? Well, x cubed has to equal 3. Sorry, x squared has to equal 3. x squared has to equal 3. Well, square root it. So x, negative 3, has got to be equal to plus or minus the square root of negative 3. So x has to be equal to plus or minus the i square root of 3. So our solution set is plus or minus 2 plus or minus i square root of 3 which you could rewrite like this. 2 comma negative 2 comma i square root of 3 comma negative i square root of 3. That's your solution set. Okay, your homework. Worksheet 6.4, 2 through 16 even, 26 through 40 even. Good luck.